Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is the is the Israel, Israeli people, what God did for them. And they remember what God did for them. Milk and honey, grain, cattle, land, God blessed the Israeli people. And they remember what God blessed them. I remember what God did for me as a little child. I got taken away from my country, come to America. I carry Psalm 23 in me, with me, in my heart for a long time. I never understand why Psalm 23 was with me. I remember when I was little, I even sing that song, Psalm 23, in Vietnamese. And I, I carried that for a long time. I came to America when I was 14 years old. And I came here. And I didn't understand why I carry Psalm 23 with me. But come to realize and know it that God had a plan for my life. He brought me here for a reason. He brought me here for a reason. So, the truth, really true, God, He did bless. If we remember, He blessed Him. That's my prayer. God blessed Him. In Psalm uh, 65, verse 11, 12, and 13. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy hand drop sadness. They drop upon the path of the wilderness, and the little hill return on every side. The patches are closed with cloth. The valley also are covered over with corn. They sow for joy. They also sing. The Israeli people remember what God did for them. They remember. Last week we talking about Psalm 23, and we started the first verse, and today we go to the second verse. The first verse says, "The Lord is my shepherd." I saw no one. The Lord is my shepherd. It's all I need. He is my answer. I saw no one. I remember there was a time I want a lot of things. Now I don't care anymore. Because it's not that important. I saw no one. It don't matter. I saw no one because just God alone is all I need. So today we go study the word news. He made me lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside white water. He made me lie down in the green pastures. Trust. Rest in God, believe, and have faith in Him. Let He help you. His green pastor is better than our bed mattress. My bed mattress is not that great. Sometimes I lay on it, I can pain on my back. So His green pastor is so much better to rest in Him. He lead me beside holy water. Sometimes your life is so busy, you don't even know that you are coming or going. You need to be still and let God lead you to the quiet place. Just you and Him, peaceful and beautiful. Like water that flow I do remember God told me that Israeli people sing. I do love to sing because what he done for me, I cannot afford not to remember. Like the song that I sing now is Jesus pays all, all to him I own. That is all I sing now. Because really true, everything we have, it belongs to him. 
So remember, <coughs> if it's hard to smile, remember the God love you. Keep the smile, keep the joy in your heart. When you're sad, be sad. So be happy. Be happy because we love you. Thank you. May God bless you, children. Amen. Change things up by meaning that by that meaning is that God inspired me to change things up. Amen. You'll find that I truly believe in the unction of the Holy Ghost. So it may not be according to what you see on the, the bulletin, but it's better to go with the flow of the Lord. So I'm going to ask Elizabeth, would you please come up here, please? Please. Then I'll come to you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name, before you sit your prayer warrior, your, your daughter who loves you so much and has gone through so much. And right now I'm going to ask everyone to join with me in prayer. Amen. Father, you give us the Holy Spirit who comforts us in times of trouble. And Lord Jesus, there is no greater comfort than what we receive from you. And Father, your daughter has been so faithful, Father, to your love, to your kindness, to your care, Lord Jesus. And Father, it is you that will decide her husband's choice. It is you that will decide whether to bring him home or let him stay. It is you, Lord Jesus, that will create miracles that only our eyes can see because you created them. And Lord Jesus, we ask of you today, Lord Jesus, that you continue the miracle. But it's been ten long years, Father, for which she has gone through, Lord God. And I ask that you just uplift her today and just minister to a heart that is sad a heart that loves, a heart that is faithful to her God. When all else has gone awry, Father, you will never fail us. You will never fail her. Father, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing she is to this body, the blessing she is to each one, as she has laid up prayers for each one, each individual as well as myself in this place, Father, for you. And Father, I thank you for prayer that's so precious and Father, that you, you, you actually love it when the fragrance comes up into your nostrils. The fragrant prayer of a righteous person availeth much. So Father, I ask that you just bless our dear sister today. That Father, that you would continue to wrap your arms around her and that you would continue to love on her. And then Father, I ask of you that we would see a miracle yet in Carl. A miracle that only you can bring about. And Father, uh, we thank you that whatever you decide, I, I remember the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they went in that first furnace, they, they were determined that whatever you decide in their life, Father, it will be so. And you walk with them in that fiery furnace. And Father, you bring about all the things for your glory. So Father, we ask that, Father, you would be glorified through what's going on in this family's life. Bless each and every one in the family, Father. Not just Elizabeth, but all the children. But, Father, I ask that Father Carl would have such a joy and such an excitement in the Holy Ghost rise up within him that he would be able to get up off of that sick bed and preach once again, Lord God, that you would bring about that anointing that only you can bring about. In Jesus' precious name, we all said, Amen. Amen. You know what? We are in prayer together. That's why I'm so excited for the young boys that come up with me, Michael and Andrew. But I'm not excited just for them. I'm excited for all of us in this house. That together, our prayers join together. They create an answer. 
They create an answer that together will mean the happening that we will see. Amen? Because in Christ Jesus, there's agreement there. We agree. We're two or more are gathered in his name. So shall it be. Right, boys? Amen? So we're excited about that. If you have, if you have a, a prayer this morning, whether you've had a chance to put it down on a card or you have not, you know, the Lord can read your heart. Amen? He's the only one that can. Don't let the enemy give you any ideas because he can't do what Jesus does. Amen? Jesus can search the corners of your heart and he can bring a blessing into every area. If you have a prayer that, that you haven't had a chance to put in the basket this morning, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. If you have some, some prayer this morning that you would like lifted up to God, just, just bring it up this morning. Amen? Is there anything? Praise God. I have a prayer. I'm going to ask that you continue to pray for my insides, that God would restore them, renew them, and create them new and fresh like I was when I was a little kid all over again. Amen? Hallelujah. And He can do the same thing for you, the same thing that He does for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there any other prayers? Yes, thanks, God. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. For anything that hasn't been mentioned, we're going to lift it up this, this morning as well. Boys, there's one, one for each of you. Let's take one and, and see what we got here. Um, so this is a prayer for Jenny Rainer's sister-in-law, Chris, with kidney cancer and her niece. Uh, Ray undergoing a double mastectomy. Okay. Thing. All right. Very good. All right. This one here, Andrew, we'll read it together, right? We got Mike Park, right? Medical procedure on the what's that say, boys? Can you see that? The Landon this week on Landon. Okay, all right, praise God. So we have that lifted up before you. As well in the bulletin, you'll you'll see that we have a whole list in, in the bulletin that want to be remembered as well this this morning. Amen. We want to see the miracles of God. Amen. You know, we, we don't look to the miracles, but we look to the miracle worker. And just as we sang that song about he's working all the time there, it's Jesus that does the miracle work. Amen? That's who we look to. That's in the time of trouble. That's when the seeds are, seas are raging against us and the waves are high. We look to Jesus to calm every storm that comes before us. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's, let's leave these up before the Lord. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name, Father, we want to thank you for the prayers that have been given here this morning as well, Father, as the prayer that's upon each one of our hearts this morning. The unheard and unspoken prayer as well as those that are proclaimed. And Lord Jesus, we look to the prayer answerer, the prayer miracle warrior and worker that is you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you don't sleep nor slumber, that, Father, you hear our prayers. And this morning, as we lift up the prayers to you, Lord God, we just ask that, Father, we would see the answer to those prayers. And, Father, we know that you are good and that you are wonderful. Father, bless each and every one here this morning. Touch, heal in the name of Jesus, and by your blood, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one, and everyone said Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, boys. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jesus. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you so much. You know, how often do we think and remember the Lord? Oftentimes, we are so caught up with what is before us for the day that we neglect the time required to remember Jesus. I want to encourage you this morning the importance of remembering. You know, as a father, I love it when my kids give me a call. I absolutely love it because more often than not, I don't receive one. They're busy with the things of life. 
They're busy doing, living their own lives. They're occupied with the things of the day. And I'm sure, without a doubt, that my children love me. I'm sure, without a doubt, that I'm in their heart, in, a, in their mind. But oftentimes, it may be put off in a place that is more further out than close by. The Lord Jesus wants us close by. And I truly believe he's that father in heaven that desires to bring his children close. To bring us in so close that the, it's the best hug, it's the best kiss, it's the best embrace you could ever receive in life. Amen? Not only today, but tomorrow and the next day. He's the only one that can offer us an eternity of his grace, mercy, and love. Amen? He's the only one that cares about us beyond this lifetime. There are so many things today that take place in our lives that we don't remember the things of the Lord. And today is not a day of, of putting a hard thing on you, but a day of exhortation. A day of encouraging you to remember the things of our Lord Jesus Christ. To put those at the foremost of your mind rather than the tail end of your mind. To put that in the beginning of your heart rather than the last of our heart. Amen? It means a lot to the Father when we remember Him. And it means a lot to Jesus because Jesus never forgot a single thing about the Father's desires, about the Father's will, about what the Father wanted done according to His will. And He remembered to the point where He would even ask before Him, if there's any other way, Lord, but since there's not, I'm going to do everything it takes to fulfill Your, your will, Lord. Everything to do what you have in store for us. So today, as, as, we, uh, as we come to get together before the Lord, I'm going to encourage you that you remember and take in and receive what Jesus wants to give you today, tomorrow, and the next day. The Lord has been encouraging me there to continue to feed his children. Amen? How often do we go to get a meal and walk away from it and find out we're still hungry or we're not satisfied or what we ate was not agreeable with us and didn't meet its purpose? Amen? I, for one, am a steak and potatoes man. Amen? I was raised up in a farm and to this day, one of the hardest things for me is for my wife to give me one of my little uh, encouraging drinks there and stuff for those little energy drinks and say, here, honey, here. And I look at it and, okay, I'll drink it, but it ain't a steak. It ain't potatoes. It ain't what I'm looking for. But I'll tell you, the feast of the Lord and the banquet that he sets is so fulfilling and so wonderful and so precious. Amen. Are you hungry this morning? Amen. I ask you, are you hungry? Always. Amen. We need to be hungry for the things of Jesus. We need to not only have our bodies sustained, which are temporal, but we need our souls to be sustained in Jesus Christ. We need to be fed. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin this morning, for those of you that bought your Bibles with you this morning, and if you don't, look on, look on to the, onto the bulletin there or onto... Uh, you're going you're gonna to want to... I was going to thank Elizabeth, too. She did it just the way I wanted it. She put number one, number two, number three, and number four there with a space there on the bulletin. If you turn to your bulletin here, I want to present four different things to you today. Last, last week, uh, we talked about the presence of the Lord. I had 13 things. And I'm going to put, put you guys on the spot this morning. Does, out of 13 things that were mentioned about God's presence, does anybody remember one? I'm looking for an answer. Does anybody remember what was said? Because if there's 
Not one thing that was remembered. That means I stood up there last week and preached an empty sermon. That means whatever came forth was not heard. It didn't get down into your spirit. It didn't get in a place that you remembered it. It didn't get to a place that you could use it. If I'm a carpenter and I have a hammer, I'm, I'm a vital carpenter because I know how to bang in a nail. But if I don't have a hammer and I'm a carpenter, what kind of a carpenter am I? I'm worthless, right? Amen? If I can't drive in a nail with a hammer, it's awful hard to do it with a finger, although I know probably somebody that studied martial arts or something could probably do it with enough strength and practice. Not this kid. Amen? I like an old-fashioned hammer. I like a screwdriver. I like tools that I can use. Amen? One of the things that, that uh, was so important about the presence of, of Christ there in last week's message, if you got anything, I pray that you understood that He loves you. The love of Christ is so embracing, so wonderful, so permanent. But I don't want you to walk out of the house of God without the tools that you need to continue to do better in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to pray, I'm going to keep praying, I have been praying there, that your ears would be open and that... Uh, your thoughts of the day would be concerned with the Word this morning, to hear the Word of the Lord, to hear what the Spirit has to say, and to take it in and make good use of it. Amen? If Laura had not learned the notes on that piano, if she had not gotten the, the, the inspiration to have in the melody to the songs and be able to translate those to those beautiful fingers God gave her, it wouldn't be much of a pianist up there, would it? Or organist. Because she wouldn't be able to communicate. If you're standing in the midst of a crowd and someone doesn't know Jesus Christ, how are you going to communicate to that person the love of Christ if you haven't studied the Word of God? I was happy, Karen, to hear what you had to say. Because that's a continuance and a desire to see the growth and the understanding and the study of the Word of God. Amen? In Timothy, he tells us, Timothy tells us, study the Word of God to show yourselves approved. And by that approval, I mean the approval of Christ Jesus. Because it's Him that makes the difference in the approval of His Word. Amen? His word and the inspiration of his word is God-given. It's not just words written on a page, but it was written through the Holy Spirit. Those words have authority. Those words have power. And those words have life that they give to you that brings forth. If you want to be a flourishing flower in Christ Jesus, you want the words of God just touching your heart, touching your mind, touching your spirit, and letting you grow where you were once not growing. Everyone comes to a place from the time of birth in a place of growth. From the time that we begin to grow bodily as well as a time that we're spiritually birthed and we begin to grow in the spirit. Amen. We can't stay on milk all the time. We need to get steak. We need to get the good solid food. We need to be, get the meat of the word and be able to deal with it and work with it and, and be able to communicate it to someone out there that needs to hear it. Amen. Very shortly, I, I mentioned this to, uh, to Elizabeth we were talking, and, and I mentioned it just shortly from here. They were already making announcements that the psychics are going to be coming to Syracuse. The psychics stand on the other side of the fence along with the witches and witchcraft and all that other area, if you were there to go there to address them, would you be able to stand before them and witness Jesus Christ and His Word? We need to be prepared and ready in all seasons to communicate the love of Christ Jesus. Those people that are going to have that meeting need to hear Jesus. Those people need to hear there's a God in heaven who does not like witchcraft. He does not like us dealing with witchcraft. And he wants us to bring the blessing of the Holy Ghost and the good news of the Holy Ghost. Four guidelines to this great cause. I call it a great cause. Amen? The cause of knowing Jesus. Number one, I put, it's right in your bulletin, 
four guidelines to this call. Number one, by building up ourselves in our most holy faith. Number two, by praying in the Spirit. By remaining, number three, in the sphere of God's love for us. And number four, by longing and waiting for the return of our Lord. Who today is reminding you that Jesus is coming back? Jesus will return. Just as he said he was coming before the first time, he's coming again. And I'm here to remind you, nothing's changed because when God says he's going to do something, he will do it to the letter and he won't miss. And it's in his time, not ours. Though he spoke it, though he said it, we await his return and in glory, expecting the glorious things of God to happen to us. Amen? And I'm going to ask you to return to Jude this morning. Small one of the smaller books of the Bible, just before Revelation. You have your word there. I'm going to start in, uh, in verse, uh, verse 20. Be ye beloved, but, but he beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You know, God is coming. Jesus is coming for a pure and spotless bride. Amen? A, a bride. He came as a lamb, pure and spotless for us, and gave his life. What more could he ask for than his church to come to see him without spot or wrinkle? I'm going to ask you to turn back the next page backwards here and come to verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints I want to bring this to remembrance of you because when Jude wrote this epistle when he wrote this a letter he began with the intent to, to describe and, and bring about the understanding of salvation in a greater way. But as it turned out, the Holy Spirit encouraged him to bring about the fact that the, the word and the authority of the word is true and to bring about the truth of that word and the importance that one day we will stand as a church against the enemy and there will be false teachers, there will be those that creep into the church itself and try to be false teachers that we must be in the latter days. Amen? We as a church are walking in a point in time where we are in those latter days. Amen? If you see all the things that are taking place with around the world, it would bring about to you and a light bulb would go off that things are happening much quicker much more dangerously, much more advancedly, that, that we have to pay close attention to be ready and prepared for the things of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Preparation is everything. Amen? That means knowing the Word and understanding it and being able to divide it rightly according to the Holy Spirit. And it's so important to have the Holy Spirit in your life. Why do we need the Holy Spirit in our life? Because without the Holy Spirit, we have nothing from heaven placed in us that brings about the understanding and the wisdom and the truth and brings it out to our human spirit and gives us understanding. Every Christian, every proclaiming Christian, needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to I'm not going to tiptoe around it. I'm not going to dance around it. But we as Christians need the Holy Ghost in our lives in filling us that we may remain in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That our lives are successful according to God's will. 
and according to what He desires from us. Building us and to be earnestly contending. You know, when I think of the word contending, I think of the fighters that get in the boxing ring. Amen? And the whole contention that's in that ring is that we're going to fight and we're going to win. Amen? Now, I'm not... I'm not saying that we should be in the boxing ring fighting with one another. What I'm saying is that same contention that says we will fight against the enemy, we will fight against the things that are against God, will bring us as warriors in Christ Jesus against those things. Amen? And I don't know a single boxer or a single one that goes to war that does not prepare themselves for it. Right? That's what boot camp's all about. Val, you know about that, right? Amen. Yeah, that's right. Getting into that boot camp and climbing up those fences and hauling yourself up those ropes. All those things may not be, uh, sound, sound like they're silly, but I'll tell you, it brings about a, an understanding and an obeying authority to, to the truth that needs to take place. Amen? We get, we, if, you, if you're kind of rule, unruly, I'll tell you, if you go in the military, you can, you can get uh, turned around real quick. Either that or you spend a lot of time peeling potatoes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to turn with me. I want, I want you to mark down under building up ourselves in a holy faith. I want you to put verse 20 of Jude, okay? So that you can, you can refer back to that. And I want you now to come with me, and we're going to go to Romans chapter 10. And we're going to be going back and forth this morning, so I ask that you just bear with me this morning because I want to get a little bit more in depth today as, as we discuss the things of the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Verse t uh, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. I want to make mention here that, that there is not going to be ex an excuse before the Lord that his word wasn't brought forth. We, we, we can't stand and say that we never heard if the word was very much aware. Very much heard. By hearing of the word means to take it in and receive it. Amen? That we receive what we hear. Faith come by hearing. You want to build up your faith in Christ Jesus, just begin to hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen? That's why when you're reading the Word, I encourage it to each and every one to take and uh, actually speak it aloud as, as you're reading it. Now, you, you don't need ears to hear. Don't, don't get me wrong. Because even a deaf person can hear from the Lord. Because the Lord can speak to them.